Hello, bloody puppies of the world, and welcome back to Blood Bowl. I am taking a break from Nurgle's Anatomy for a while to play this new team, the Scat Rats. It's a Skaven team that I made not too long ago, and I've only played one match with them so far. And I'm actually going to go ahead and record it after this, because that is a story that I will tell in the actual video. But for now, this is what our team looks like right here. They're the Scat Rats, Team Auto, I'm the Scat Rats, QBDB, bop, 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 bop. First off, we have Ratman John as our thrower. He's got pass and sure hands, AG3, strength 3, movement 7, armor value 7. Got a Ra, he's a blocker. Storm, well, he's a storm vermin, which is basically just a blitzer for a rat. We got Rank Johnson, same thing, he's got block on him. Next up is Rotten Jelly Roll Morton. He's got dodge and uh, movement 9 and AG4. This guy's ridiculous. All the gutter runners here are ridiculous with their stats. Same thing with Filthy Baker, he's also a good runner, so he's got Dodge, Fats, Rats, Waller, Dodge, Mouse, Kimball, Dodge. Bucky Fitzgerald, our first line rat, has no skills. Louis Tailstrong, Mouse Coria, Django Butthart. Now, these all should be level 1, with 0 SPP and no extra skills, but I did play a match before this, and once again, I'll explain that. But I am going to go ahead and record the replay of that match right now, so it's actually going to be post-commentary. So... With three rerolls and one apothecary, and and that, <laughs> that's the end. I will see you in the actual match. Alright, here we are loading up the actual match. It is us, the Scat Rats, Coach Mental Gen, versus Le Fay de Boy, if I pronounce that right. Hell if I know. I don't know why I'm seeing so many French people in this game. But I don't actually know the coach's name on that one. And I do like, I like most of this, the fields in this game. They just look pretty nice. Now, like I said before, this is post commentary. This is actually a replay, so I can I can see the players' names and I can speed things up and I can change things at will. So that's that's a lot better than just watching it in the, the preview window in Sony Vegas. So we're gonna play this match. We're gonna watch this match at double speed at least. <clears throat> you can see the timer there; it's going down twice as fast as it normally would. The reason being that this match is pretty long and you'll see why it's a very high scoring match actually and if you saw at the beginning it actually listed what the result of this match was in my little match history and I'm just gonna say right now it was a tie the first half heavily implies that it was going to be a loss for me and you'll see why but I actually did manage to catch up and make this a tie so that's that's our first Skaven match coming out as a tie which honestly is fine with me because this was my first match against the human as Skaven, and my third match total, I've only I had only played two against the computer before this, so third match total, first match against humans. I feel like I did pretty well, especially considering I was going up against whales, which in my opinion are one of the, like probably in my opinion they're probably the best team in the game, mostly because of the war dancers, but also because they have is it AG4 across the board? Do all of them have AG4? Yes, all of them have AG4, and that's really, 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 really useful. They're also really good at passing. I mean, they've got a catch that starts out with catch and dodge and sprint, which is ridiculous. There's a the ball. So this is going to go a little bit quicker than the rest of the games, because the rest of the games are at normal speed, and this one is at double speed, so that's why everybody's freaking flipping over, uh, doing backflips so quickly. Now I'm going to try and catch up with what's going on. Actually, I'm going to leave you to, to actually see what's going on in the game here while I talk about other things, because I haven't seen this game in a few days, so I'm not entirely sure what happened. But he just, he just used to re-roll and picking up the ball, which is good for me. It's very good for me. Now basically, I just want to talk, first off, about why I'm doing post-commentary here and not live commentary. Reason being... I had started out this game doing live commentary, I jumped in, I did matchmaking, and I was like, hey, bloody puppies, let's go play our first game of Skaven, and I did the commentary. And then about turn six, I think, I started getting really mad, because I was getting a lot of injuries and a lot of knockouts and just some, some annoying rolls, and the other team was getting pretty lucky, and they have Wardancers, which already makes me angry, because Wardancers are like the best unit in the game, in my opinion. So it was like, you know what, I'm just going to scrap this game, I'm going to lose, I'm going to just remake this team, and pretend like this game never happened. So I stopped recording, and I turned off Audacity. And then I just played through the rest of the game for whatever reason, because I don't really like surrendering, and 
and being a little bitch, but turned out I caught up, so... <laughs> so here I am re-recording the game, even though I really only recorded it once already. <laughs> so that was fun. You can't really see the rolls being rolled because it doesn't have the box popping up, but you can see, that's why I have my, my mouse over this text box here. It does say the results that happened in there. I got a push. If you, actually, is my, I don't think my mouse cursor is back on, is it? Because I turned it off for Bioshock. But if you look down here in the box, it'll say pushed, pushed. That means I got two pushed blocks. Or if it says pushed and defender stumbles, that means uh, I got a pushed and uh, defender stumbles. So, defender stumbles is the yellow starburst with the exclamation. And defender down is the yellow starburst with nothing in it. Attacker down is the skull. Both down is the skull and the starburst in the same block. And pushes the arrow, so... For those of you who just knew it by by the visuals, that's what it is. That's what it is. All right, so that's that's what I'm doing post commentary here. You can see this guy can't really I'm not really able to get the ball out of his hands because he's got sort of a little loose cage set up. I mean, I do have MA9 guys like Mouse Kimball. Go Mouse Kimball, he's awesome. We we'll start with dodge, but then he's got a lot of guys to start with dodge too. But slightly less. I mean, he still has like movement seven, movement eight players, so it's not a big deal for him to lose that that one movement, you know. But anyway, so the reason I, I chose Skaven to start playing as is because I wanted to do something different. So I've been playing as Nurgle for nine match or ten matches. Sorry, ten matches. So I was like, okay, this you know this is it's cool, but like Alzheimer got a strength down, so he's pretty useless, and he's level three. I don't really want to start. And buy another Beast of Nurgle for, you know, oops, for 150 whatever thousand gold it is. Something like that. And just have that one get hurt too with the Strength Down. Because Strength Down was the worst possible thing that could happen to Alzheimer. And it happened. So I was like, no. So, I don't know if I'll ever go back to Nurgle's Anatomy. But the reason I chose Skaven is because it's something very different. This is a very dodgy team as to where the Nurgle team was a very bashy team. They were about getting injuries. They're about moving up the pitch very, very slowly with a running game. They didn't really do any passes. And really the Pestigers were the only one that could actually pick up the ball because everyone else, or the Rodgers could too, but like, you know, the Beast had had one agility, I think, and and the Warriors had two agility, so they would never pick up the ball. And that got kind of annoying because I was still getting a whole bunch of injuries on that team anyway, even though... <laughs> even though... I had high armor value, it just wasn't really helping me. So I got, I don't know, I got a little tired of them. So Skaven, in in the opposite way, is a very dodgy team. It's very movement based. Skaven have the highest movement in the game. Our gutter runners, which we have four of, have movement nine. And the pitch is only 26 squares long, so if you get sprint on these guys, they can literally move half the pitch in one move one turn which means they are the best team to try and get one t one turn touchdowns with it's entirely possible if you if you get a movement plus on one of the gutter runners and you give them sprint on the next level up they can realistically make one turn touchdowns anytime they want to as long as they start on the uh, the line of scrimmage plus they have dodge so they can get they can pretty easily get by any any little um, line of defense that the opponent tries to sit up. I, there are still risks involved, of course, but you know it's very useful to have have that opportunity, that possibility to do so if you want to. No, no. I also, I also, I think at about halftime, I attempted doing a normal one turn touchdown with chain pushing, and it almost worked. Oh, I was so sad. I was so sad because it almost worked, and I was doing it perfectly, and then I just got one bad roll, and it got ruined. <laughs> I was so sad. There you go. We got a knockout with our gutter runner over here. Rank Johnson. Go Rank Johnson. We do have an, a decent amount of people set up here around the ball carrier. But you can see soon that isn't really going to help us. Because War Dancer. That's, that's the answer. Because War Dancer. With their freaking giant mohawks and everything. So that's up. And to be fair, this team had a few more skills than I did. This is my first match with this team. And this guy had a few level 2s. See, this lineman's level 2, he's got dodge. This, I thought the war dancer, this war dancer's level 2, he's got sidestep. That kind of thing. So that's sort of annoying. I really like how this game pits you against, um, 
people that have much better skillage than you. But you can see he did a pass there. He had this guy in scoring range, which I didn't really even think about. And I believe he's about to... Actually, no, he's about to delay, if I remember right, which makes me a little bit sad. Makes me a little bit sad. And there you go. Yeah, so there's that. I have no hope of catching up to him at this point. So I... If I remember, I just try and... I don't remember this match at all. Or not at all, but I don't remember it very well because... I recorded this on May 6th, and it is currently May 17th, I want to say? Let's see. May 18th. Yeah, so this was about two weeks ago. And I just got it for... Anyway, it's about two weeks ago, so I don't really remember a whole lot that's going on in this match. But let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and take a look at our outboxes. He's got one knocked out. I've got one knocked out. So, so far, it's not too bad. Just, you know, that's fine. I get Mouse Kimball up here to potentially try and attack Glornor because if if I learned anything from that one match against the guy who had no rerolls, it is don't delay if you have no rerolls. If you have no rerolls, just freaking score if someone's in range of you. Django Butthart there gets I think defender stumbles. He gets two defender stumbles against the player with dodge, which is just fantastic. But what can you do? Freaking catcher, man. Alright, so there's that. I mean, there's really no hope of stopping them because this guy's just about to knock me over. But, if he, you know, even. If, if, if stutter. I hate when I stutter. It happens so rarely and I feel stupid. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, even if this guy tries to block Django here, first off, that's a red die block, which is never a good idea. And second off, there's always that risk with no rerolls that it's going to screw up. But I don't think he actually goes for it. If I remember right, he just scores. Yep, there it is. There it is. Sniff, sniff. So that's the first... I mean, this, this match is progressing along pretty quickly because of this double speed thing. So maybe I'll just stay with this for a while. Because it doesn't waste either of our times. And I, like, I do sort of like putting up these hour and a half videos. But at the same time, I have stuff to do. You guys have stuff to do. It doesn't really work that well. As far as time constraints go, especially with school going on, I don't have that much time at all. I barely have free time. This is taking up a lot of my free time as it is. So having this double speed thing definitely helps. And thankfully I start with the ball this round. We have three turns to score, which is entirely possible with the Skaven team because they are ridiculous. But you'll see it starts turning hopeless for me at the end of this half. half. And then it starts turning hopeful again in the next half, but we gotta we gotta wait for that. If you'll excuse my spoilers. So I try and set up this weird defensive line, which I don't know I didn't know what I was doing because once again, first time playing Skaven against humans, it's or against a human player, not against humans, these are what else. And he gets like the actually no. What was that? No, I think that's out of bounds, so if I remember I just give it to him. Yeah, I just give it to Ratman John there. Mr. Thrower. Pass means he gets to reroll if he makes a pass and fails, and sure hands means he gets to reroll if he fails to pick up the ball. So those are both very, very useful skills. So Ratman John is a... Well, I want to say he's a good player. If I remember right, he, he's a shit player in this game. But, like, as far as skills go, he uh, he's pretty good. Sort of a waste of a blitz there. Just get one push. I'm not sure why I went for a one-die block on that one, but it happened. Trying to get Fats Rats Watt back here so I can throw it. But, uh... Because I and Skaven are very good at throwing as well. They have a very good passing game. So, if you have one player who's always in range of scoring, then you're always basically one turn away from scoring. That seems to be, like, the motto for Skaven. They're always one turn away from being able to score. And I remember I played against the Skaven team once. Just once, actually. I've never played against another Skaven team. But, uh... I don't remember. I think I was playing Dark Elves and it ended up in a tie. But basically, I had I had control of the ball. It was near their side of the uh, the end zone, so I was pretty close to scoring. I was like three squares away, I think. One of their players knocked mine down, picked up the ball, threw it to a player at the the line of scrimmage. That player ran, threw it to a player who is in range of the end zone, and that player ran it in. I was like, what just happened? Because he literally covered the entire field in one turn without me really being able to do anything because with AG4 even the normal even the normal players are good at 
passing. Even the gutter runners, I mean, they're very good at passing because they can only fail with a one or a two. And even with that, you have a rerolls available to you if you fail those those rolls. And of course, hey, guess who guess who gets lucky? This guy, he gets a defender down and a boat down, which <laughs> ridiculous. But you can see, ah, he made me drop the ball, and he's got two players around the ball. Third player tying up my line rat here, Mouse Coria. Oh, so he now has control of the ball before I even get it into his half, which makes me very sad. So at this point, I was like, um, I don't know if I want to play this game anymore. I think I just want to give this one up. Because he basically has no opposition right now. He's tied up my guys to the point where I can't really get around. And even with the ones that I can get around, like with my gutter runners, you only have strength too. So with the assist going on here, I have to make a few dodges just to get a red die block, which is <laughs> bad odds, to say the least. So he's got it pretty well set up here. And I feel like I did get partially unlucky with this game. I did get some unlucky rolls, and he got some lucky rolls. But it was also the fact that I just didn't really know how to play Skaven. And I still don't, because I haven't played another match with them since this one. So we'll see how the next one goes. I don't know when I'll have time for that. But it will be eventually, and I don't know if it'll be post-commentary or back-to-live commentary. It's really dependent on what you guys think of the style versus the normal style where I actually talk over the game while I'm playing. Which is a little difficult because I'm constantly pausing because I don't really know... Because, like, I have to think about my moves and commentate at the same time, and that's very difficult to do. Whereas with post-commentary, I'm basically not even looking at the screen right now. <laughs> I am actually looking at my phone. I know, it's very unprofessional, but... <laughs> I'm gonna need some more views before I start getting more professional, you know? I mean, this is already HD recording, and good audio quality and such. And then I get a turnover. What did I roll on that? Attacker down. The one die block. After a reroll, that's right. I got them both down. And then the guy was like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't, I want a defender down. So I rerolled, and guess what? Turnover. So that's, I got really mad at that one. That was the point that I wanted to give up right there. That specific turn. I was like, oh, I hate this game so much. There's so many times when I've said I hate this game, and yet I just keep, I just keep playing it. It's addicting. It's fun. I like it, because I hate it. But it's, it's just sort of this love-hate relationship, but I can't stop. Can't stop addicted to the shindig. This, this life is more than just a win big. Red Hot Chili Rats, that's what I'm talking about. But you can see he's about to score next turn, which... Oh, so sad. But the almost one turn touchdown is coming up, so just wait for that. Also Knockout, which is entirely unnecessary. Now the biggest drawback to the Skaven team is that they have, next to the Halfling team, they have the lowest armor value games on their team. It's basically 7 all around except for the Storm Vermin, which have 8, which is just average armor value, but 7 is bad armor value. Which means with this team you are going to have a lot of players getting injured, getting stat downs, getting deaths. That's going to happen quite often. And you do have an Apothecary, which lets you reroll any injury once per game. But, in my, like, from what I've noticed, I think I would like to save the Apothecary for Gutter Runners and Storm Vermin, not for the Line Rats, because the Line Rats don't have any skills to start off with. They only have average strength and agility. Movement 7 is actually the lowest movement on this team. And, I mean, the Storm Vermin have movement 7 as well, but they start out with block, and they have higher, higher armor values, so they're a lot more useful. So basically what I'm thinking is, if a line rat gets an injury, I just won't apothecary it. If he dies, I won't do that in case I uh, run into a player later in the game who who gets an injury, like a gutter runner who gets an injury. I can't, like, I need that gutter runner to stay alive because they're a lot more valuable than the line rats. And I just made, like, three dodges there for basically no reason. Let's see the rolls on that one. Six, three, four. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, I actually got decently lucky with the dodges in this game. You'll see that later in the next half. It's like, how did I do that? That doesn't... I don't understand how that just worked. I mean, agility teams are all about the BS rolls. Elves, Skaven, BS rolls. That's, that's just what they do. That's what they excel at. 
you think, hey, that's a one in two hundred chance of working. Is that's got a better chance of working than a than a single go for it. I'm telling you. But there's this guy's second touchdown. So I was definitely feeling down on myself at this point, but I was like, you know what? I've never even tried a one turn touchdown before. I don't really remember how it works. But let me go ahead and set it up and just start doing it and see if it works. And it actually, <laughs> like, oh, it was so cool. Basically, the idea behind a one-turn touchdown is you need to push, you need to move around, push one of the enemy players into your little mass of players I'm about to set up here. Um, but don't knock them down. So you push them into your little group, then with another player adjacent to the enemy player, you push that one into another player, and... Wait, uh, let me let me explain this a little bit better here. When you get a push, or a defender stumbles, or defender down, you have the option to push the, the defender into three squares behind where that player is currently standing. If all three of those squares are currently occupied, you still get to choose which square that player gets pushed to, and then you get to, and then that player takes um, the player's square, the spot of the player behind them, and then that player who was previously standing in that spot, you get to choose where they get pushed as well. So that's the theory behind chain pushing and behind one turn touchdowns. You can see I've got my little glob of players here, so I've I've run back here. See, behind this player, there are three squares occupied, so I can choose to push him this way. And then this player back here gets pushed into my end zone because I chose to have him back there. Which means, if I get Ratman John to pick up the ball there, I can go ahead and pass it to Filthy Baker here, who has already been pushed into their end zone because I chain pushed and pushed uh, occupied players back even farther. So you see, I just did it again there by doing another push. So now Filthy Baker is actually in range of scoring if I remember right. If he if he makes two go for it rolls, he actually is in range. So all I have to do now is throw the ball to Filthy Baker, do one dodge and I can score. And then Ratman John fumbles with a pass with the pass ability. I was so mad. I was so mad. If I succeeded in that, it would just been one dodge. Just one dodge, and I would have scored. And done a proper one-turn touchdown. I was so mad. Because look, look, I got a one on the pass. So I, uh, he re-rolled that. Because that's what he does. He re-rolls things when he passes. And I get a two. It's like, are you kidding me? <sighs> Made me so sad. But that's the first half, so you can see why I was feeling pretty hopeless at this point. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to win. I don't know why I'm still playing this game. I should just give up and go do something productive. But for some reason, I stuck it out, and it turned out okay. So since they chose to receive in the first half, they actually get to kick me the ball again one more time. So I get to receive in this half, which is always a nice feeling. Now I believe, do I have 10 players on the pitch at this point, or 11? Okay, we both have 11 players on the pitch at this point, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, both of our teams would be able to get by with, you know, even eight players. That wouldn't really be a problem. But, you know, 11's good too. So, he kicks it pretty far back, which is a nice kick, because that means I have to roll back. If he had... Oh my god. If he had kicked the ball out of bounds on that one-turn touchdown turn... I would have totally scored, but you know, it's hindsight, whatever, it's it's done. What's done is done, and the game ended just fine anyway, so it's not a huge deal. You can see here I'm trying to clear away. I'm trying to clear away, and I probably should have gone with a War Dancer, because War Dancers are <laughs> the most ridiculous unit in the game. They've got four agility, movement, eight, they start with Blodge. They start with Blodge, also turnover, before I can even pick up the freaking ball. Or it's when I tried to pick up the ball. I swear, Ratman John is the worst player. He fails two actions for which he gets free rerolls. Free rerolls. He fails it. He gets a two and a one when he tries to pick up the ball and he needs a four. Actually, he gets a three and a one is what he gets. 
So basically, what we've learned from this game so far is that Ratman John is the worst player in the game. Because even though he has good skills, he still can't throw or or pick up the ball. Which is just ridiculous. Because if you think about it... Okay, so we need to debate whether it's better to pick up the ball and throw it with a gutter runner who has agility 4 or with the thrower who has agility 3 but pass in sure hands, which lets him do a free reroll. So, right... Gutter runners can get 3, 4, 5, or 6 and pick up the ball or throw the ball successfully. That means they have a 66% chance of doing that. A 2 and 3 chance, basically. And even if they fail, they can do a reroll, which has a heavy chance of succeeding. Now, as far as the thrower goes, he's only got agility 3, which means he can only get uh, 4, 5, or 6 and succeed in picking up the ball or in throwing the ball. But he gets free rerolls, so even if you don't have a reroll left he can still do that um, and see he actually successfully threw the ball there to a line right I don't know why I threw it to a oh it's a gutter runner so I, I couldn't I couldn't tell a rotten jelly roll Morton that's right he's actually a really good player as you'll see but honestly it seems like gutter runners might actually be better at throwing and picking up the ball than the actual thrower just because of that one point difference in agility which is funny it's, it's funny we can see here, I did sort of a risky thing here in running by and... Oh, also I got an injury. That's right. Broken ribs. Missed next game. Sweet. I can't remember if he rerolled that, but we're going to check that out later. Now, basically what I did here was I tried to make some tackles zones. Yeah. Oh, and I also tried to give Rotten Jelly Roll Morton an assist here because he was all by, him los all by his lonesome. <clears throat> and that... Could have ended poorly if he didn't have an assist there because anyone with strength 3 could have come up and gotten a 2 die block on him. And now it's just a 1 die block, which is obviously a lot <clears throat> a lot riskier. Yeah, so I'm clearly within touchdown zone and I'm making some tackle zones here. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Because at this point I'm, I've got a 2 down lot. I've, I'm, I'm behind by 2 points. So it's always hopeful to be, you know, close to the zone. And I believe he actually does a pretty good job at attempting to, to infiltrate my cage. Or he just doesn't try. I don't remember. Let's find out. Does he just not try and infiltrate the cage? Let's see. No, he doesn't. He just tries to get some injuries. And, oh, that's right. He's going he's gonna to surf Django with the D is silent. I should have added that to his name, D is silent Django. But you can see he got surfed. It didn't do anything because he didn't even get an injury, so it's like, um, whatever. That's fine. He just pops up right there. He's off the pitch, of course, but, you know, it's fine. You know where the get Not a big deal. Now, he did have two players with Loner, I believe, at this point, on his team, the Wood Elf team. But I don't think it ever actually came down to him having to use rerolls with either of those players because they're both linemen. And linemen don't really do that much. But well, he does have this one player over here to pressure me into scoring, which I didn't like. I don't like delaying with Skaven just because they they can score. They can grab the ball and score very easily, especially if you give them strip ball, which at this point I haven't done. But I have given one of my players wrestle after this game, which will help uh, knock down ball carries who have block. It's going to be pretty useful. If I give that player strip ball, oh man. I think it's something like a 98% chance of them dropping the ball if you block with that player. So it's like, oh, I think it'll turn out all right. <laughs> oh, I love that animation. I like dancing. But there's my first touchdown as this team. That guy's clearly out, and my guys are all back in. So it's 10 to 11 as far as team goes, team count. Of course, I'm kicking them the ball now, unfortunately, I think, right? Pretty sure I am. Pretty sure I am, but we are not terribly far from the end of the game. Rotten Jelly Roll Morton proves himself to be one of the better players on the team, gets himself three SPP to start off. Ratman John does have one SPP from the successful throw before, which is clearly very helpful. <gasps> I need some lunch, holy crap. Because <gasps> I have an eight hour shift today at work, and it's already noon. So, we'll get on there right after this. But for now, <gasps> sandwiches, yes! Sorry. <laughs> I'm hungry. 
Anywho's, it's just like I'm looking at Rotten Jelly Roll Morton's name. It's got Jelly Roll in it. Can't help but think of food. So this is a strange formation I actually found online that I sort of wanted to try out. You sort of got this little cross formation going on here. You got the three line rats up there. A storm vermin to sort of protect up here. I don't Mouse Mal Kimball back here because, I mean, why not? It's Mouse Kimball. Because classic Mouse Kimball. Mouse Kimball is also a good player. Unfortunately, Ratman John proves himself to be the worst player again. And even though I did try and kick the ball to the center of the pitch, he decided, hey, I'm going to kick that out of bounds. Sounds like a good idea. So, it's like, Ratman John, why are you the worst? Why are you the worst? Seriously, guys, he's the worst. Don't, don't, we're going to swear at Ratman John all day. Air day. Because he's the worst. But it turns out, alright, we, I mean, we do have five rerolls at this point. I did get a lot of rerolls because being an agility team, you do need rerolls pretty often because you're making dodge rolls just so often. They're bound to fail at least once in a while, even if you do have dodge. Like, it's a small chance, but you are doing like three or four dodges with one player at the same time, sometimes. And, I don't know. It's risky. Anyway, he did a, a reroll there for some reason, and it just ended up being a push. I don't know why he did that, but, you know, I won't complain. He's got one reroll. I've got five. Works out pretty well. Now, he's decided to stay back and make an opening before he rushes forward. So, I think what I did here was I tried to... <laughs> first off, he gets a boat down. And he already wasted his reroll that turn, so there's that. I do love turnovers when it's the opponent getting them. If I remember right, what I try and do is tie up these guys back here <clears throat> from uh, from scoring. Because basically, obviously the ball carrier can't reach the end zone from there. And the ones that can are back here. So if I stop these guys from being able to reach the end zone, then he can't score as quickly. And when, he, when I force this guy to run down in order to score, then I can just go over and block him that way. To catch my drift. Now, I don't think I ever managed to knock down a War Dancer in this match. I swear to God, I don't think I've ever knocked down a War Dancer in any match that I've played against Wood Elves because they are the best unit. They've got Blodge and Leap to start off with and amazing stats. Like, I don't know what's up with them, but they're OP to me. War Dancers. I mean, it's fine. I guess that's part of the Wood Elf appeal. That's what makes them so good. So ridiculously hard to actually play against. But it's like, it's just annoying to play against because they are so good. Especially if you're just a very new team. And none of your players actually have any skills. Like, any added skills because they haven't leveled up yet. And then you start off with these two amazing players. And yeah, like, I understand that their linemen, line elves, have... You know, average stats, but they still have a a AG4, and that's a really good stat. AG4 is, to me, way more valuable than, than Strength 4. It's way more valuable. It's like, blocks, I don't know, blocks are risky, but dodges with AG4, not risky. I mean, a little bit, but not that risky. I don't know, man. That's just my thoughts. War dance, just like, war dancers are ridiculous. I still managed to do well in this game against them, but it's like, still, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, gutter runners are also very, very good. Wait, why did I call the storm vermin gutter rush? And I've called, like, gutter runners gutter rush? I don't know. Just realizing that now, but anyway. I did manage to pressure him to throw the ball there. Now, thankfully, that guy is down. He's not in touchdown range. This guy already moved. This one is the only one that can actually reach. He'll have to make a few dodges, and he doesn't have the dodge ability, so... I think this guy just sort of makes a cage for himself. And once again, this is all based on memory of something that happened two weeks ago, so I'm not entirely sure. On what happened, and someone just dodged. I don't know who it was. Might have been this one. I don't know. Who was it? Ethan? Ethan? Whatever his name is. There you go. Makes another throw. Wait a sec. Does he score right now? I don't even remember. Does he? Oh, he totally does! No, no, he's... Does he? Yes, he does. I forgot about that. Out of nowhere. That's right. That was pretty mad, because I had just scored myself, and I was like, alright, there's hope for this game. I just need to score one more time. 
and we get tied. And then that happens, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I started crying. Right, my keyboard just started crying right there. It was actually pretty pathetic, but that's what happens when you play Blood Bowl. Your keyboard becomes soaked with tears, pain, and sadness. Oh, but it, actually, the game's not over yet, so it's not a huge deal, <laughs> as you'll see. I'm actually very surprised I cut up here, because... I don't know. I mean, wood elves. That's That explains itself. They're wood elves. How do you beat wood elves? I don't know. You just do. Uh, don't ask me. I'm not good at this game. But I have made, like, 11 videos on it so far. Actually, it would be 12. This will be my 12th Blood Bowl video. That's right. First one was Dark Elf versus Orcs. <laughs> that was a fun game. Fun game. But I, I really do enjoy this game, or this team, a lot more than the Nurgle team. Because the Nurgle team is just very slow. They're pretty hard to score with. They're a low-scoring team. As opposed to the Skaven team. What I read was, if you score less than three times with the Skaven team, you're doing something wrong. Like, less than three times in one game. You're doing something wrong. That's just sort of average for them. I think I got that. Yeah, I got Quick Snap as the kickoff event, which means I get to move my players one square. Unless they're on the line of scrimmage, which I couldn't move these guys. But, the ball's nice and close. And Ratman John doesn't fail for once. So I run in here, make him a little tiny temporary cage. Get a knock down there. Get, uh, get another stun. Now, I, they have low armor value too, which is good. I did say Skaven have the lowest armor value in the game, and that applies for the Wood Elves as well. It's basically Skaven, Wood Elves, and Halflings, they have the lowest armor value, which, like, isn't, I don't know, it's not a huge deal. With the amount that you're scoring with these teams, you should be getting a decent amount of money anyway. So, replacing members isn't actually that huge of a deal. It is kind of sad, though, when you have, like, a level 5 player and then they just die randomly. Because they have low armor value and then they can't, you know, withstand anything. But I did make a nice dodge there with Filthy Baker. He is now in touchdown range. And all I need to do is get Ratman John to throw the ball next turn. But before that, I'll need to ensure that he doesn't lose the ball. Which is entirely possible. Especially with players that have leap. Because when you set up cages like this, it's just like, what cages? I don't do cages. I just jump inside cages and then I blitz you with block and then I win. That's that's the motto of war dancers. That's <gasps> Oh, so annoying. You just cannot stop war dancers. They're crazy. Watch, he's about to leap, I think, if I remember right. Yep, there it is. He just jumps right into the cage. No problem. He gets a defender down with a one die block. With a one die block. Now don't worry, hope is not lost. It is annoying. And at this point, I was swearing at my computer screen very heavily. Which I don't think I've done yet in this video. I should, just for funsies. Nah, we'll wait till next video. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of BS, you know? You, you succeed in a leap leap roll. Which, um... I mean, he did have to use a reroll for that, to be fair. And it's only a 33% chance of failing. To be fair. But then, he succeeded in getting the one die block. Which... I don't know. It was it was annoying. Point being, he hasn't picked up the ball yet, which is wonderful. But there are only three turns left, so you might be thinking, how are you going to score twice in three turns? How are you going to catch up and make a tie with the other team? Well, you, you guys just got to have patience with me. Just got to have patience. And that's the key to getting sexy. Uh, I don't I don't know. You just gotta have patience, that's the point. That's the lesson of this video. You gotta have patience. And you gotta not surrender. Especially when you're playing a team, playing with a team, that can get crazy BS rolls like I'm about to get right here. So, we get a 5 with our first dodge, then a 6, then a 5 with a pickup. Which, I mean, we could have gotten a 3, 4, 5, or 6, so... Then we fail, or we succeed with two more dodges, then we succeed in a pass, even though this guy is intercepting, and then we succeed with the final dodge. So you can see I actually did get pretty lucky there. So Filthy Baker and... That wasn't Rotten Jelly Roll Morton, was it? I'll have to see. 
Either way, that was a really lucky set of events that I got there. Let's look at that. Um, That's Rats Waller was the one that picked up the ball and did those crazy dodges. And I did have to use a reroll on that final... Actually, no. Wait. Yeah, it was Fats Rats Waller who did the crazy dodges. And then Filthy Baker was the one that dodged, or that uh, scored. So, <laughs> with his first dodge, right, he got a 1, but then he has the skill dodge, so he rolled a 3, and that's exactly what we needed. Actually, we could not even roll a 2 and succeeded, so that was just a 1 in 6 chance of failing, which obviously didn't fail. And there's my second touchdown, but you still may be thinking, Nathan, slash Wolf, whatever you call me in your head, you've only got... It's like two turns left to score again, and they have the ball. How you gonna do it? So, with my answer to you, I say, BS agility team rolls. That's how I do it. That's that's the key to the game. Because, <laughs> like, I don't care how good of a coach you are, how good of a defender you are. Agility teams just get such BS rolls and score anyway. I don't know how you stop them. Like, I don't... Like, he had a good defense going on. He had, like, three people around the ball. He had one player on the only person who could have uh, scored there as an interceptor. And it still just didn't do anything. Also, I got really... That's right. That's how I score. I got really lucky with the kick there. And it ends up being adjacent to three of my players. Which means he'll have a minus three modifier when he tries to pick up the ball. Plus one for every um, tackle zone that gets gotten rid of, so I'll put on tackle zones here, actually. Alright, what happened to my... Uh... Oh, the community texture pack mod doesn't apply in replays. I did not realize that. Anyway, yeah, I mean, so two of these tackle zones have been cancelled out. Actually, no, 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 because I have these two rats over here. So these tackle zones are still very much in play. Which means he'll have a very difficult time actually picking up that ball. Yeah, watch. Let's uh, let's actually watch the rolls for this when he tries to do so. He does have these two guys here to support the ball picker upper. Does a blitz there for some reason. Defender down and a push, so he goes with defender down, which is obviously very good for him. But you know, war dancer. That's what they do. They get <laughs> stupid rolls. Push, defender down, or attacker down, not defender down, which is fine. He doesn't have any rerolls left at this point, so if he screws up like that, he has no choice. But he has to just take it. So with the pickup, he rolls a 1, which makes me incredibly... He rolls a 1 with with both players that try and pick up the ball, which makes me so happy. So he gets a turnover, and I have the chance to actually pick up the ball. And at this point, the other coach is saying, like, all right, I've been getting pretty lucky throughout this game. It only makes sense that I'm, I'm getting unlucky now. I think it was in French, so I'm not entirely sure. But I think that's what he was saying. So, you guys, are you ready for some more BS rolls? Because I sure am. I sure am. I'm excited. So we block with Django over here. He just gets a, a push. Whatever. Not a big deal. But the reason I did that was to actually yeah, get Gudara over there more easily. Just in case we fail with picking up that ball, we do have one person on the ball now. So that's very helpful. Now we block the War Dancer here, and I like this actually. We do. Oh no, I tried. Never mind. I tried to chain push, and then he's got sidesteps. So that sort of failed. What I was trying to do was push Rank Johnson over there and push that player over there away from the ball, so we would have one more person on the ball. And uh, but anyway, we did that chain push that knocked out player onto the ball. Which makes it roll to the left, which is a risky move. I realize that, but because of that, we did get the ball from being uh, adjacent to three enemy players to adjacent to zero enemy players. And then, of course, we uh, get Mouse Kimball over there, who has shown his worth already, but he shows it even more now. We get him over there into a range of scoring. Then we tie up this player, who is really the... Actually, no, I think... One, two, three... No, he's got two players, I believe, that are capable of actually reaching Mouse Kimball at this point. And they've all got Strength 3, which is bad. Because they can all get two dice blocks on him. Now, this player has dodge, which means... He's very likely to actually dodge out, yeah, like so. 
get that roll, but he gets a both down and a defender down. I don't know why I'm saying but. I thought it was a uh, like two defender stumbles, but nope, he gets a defender down. I was like, no, I was so close. If I remember right, he tries to pick up the no. He he um he moves adjacent to the ball. I think doesn't he? Maybe not. What does he do? <laughs> Let's. I'm the worst like sports commentator ever because I just don't remember what happens. Or the worst caster. Is that what they're called? Casting? Casting? Law casting? Blah, blah, yeah, casters. I'm just not good at it because I'm not like a... I don't know. I like to take it slowly. That's what I like to do. I like to let you guys see what's happening without me analyzing every single move. I also can't talk that fast reliably. I can't keep track of what's going on reliably. And to be fair, casters, I feel like they're just talking about what you're seeing. Like, I don't need you to tell me what I'm seeing, you know? But he tried to dodge out. He got a badly hurt, which is actually basically what saved me there. Because that player had a niggle, uh, niggling injury, which is very helpful, obviously. So I got this person here to get rid of that tackle zone, which means I just have to worry about one player to do uh, the modifier. But... <laughs> That happened really fast. Um, I just did two dodges, picked up the ball, and scored. I'm telling you, Skaven always one turn away from scoring, even when you don't think they are. It's insane. See, I didn't even have to do a block there. So go Rotten Jelly Roll and Morton. He's probably my star. He's going to be my star player. And he's already level two. He scored two touchdowns in this game. I think, was it... Uh, was it... Filthy Baker that scored the other... Yeah, it was Filthy Baker that scored the other touchdown. So that's it. Tied up the game. Now it is the last turn, but you'll see as soon as we kick the ball, something happens here that actually really worries me. Basically what I was doing here was setting up these guys in an anti-one-turn touchdown position. Basically the reason I did this was because if he tries to do a one-turn touchdown by chain pushing, like I did, even if he manages to pick up the ball and do it properly... He'll still have to dodge three times through two tackle zones to actually, and do one or two go for it to actually be able to score, which is why I do this formation. And um, basically, I'm like, all right, he's not going to score. I'll just do that just in case um, so that he has no chance of scoring because that's, you know, the safe way to do it. It also keeps your players from getting hurt because if you put them on the front line, they do have the potential to be blocked more, which means more chances for injuries unnecessary injuries which means more SPP for the other team and obviously more injuries and miss next games or even deaths on your team so it's really a good idea to have your players back here on the final turn so I'm like alright you know whatever they're not going to be able to, to do a one turn touchdown now I and mean, it's very 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 unlikely but as soon as I kick the ball oh Guess what kickoff event happens? It is Riot. And what that means is the clock, you can see up here on the turn counter, the turns actually get set back by one turn, which means they have an extra turn to potentially score against me. Which is entirely possible because in an attempt to be safe, I had set all my players to be in the back. Which means they, there is no... There is no line stopping them from just completely entering my half and getting like three players in, in touchdown range. So I was like, are you kidding me right now? I did the sensible thing. I did the very defensive thing. And you reward me by giving them another chance to score. <laughs> so I was like, are you serious, game? Because at this point, I'm like, yeah, a tie. I'm totally cool with that. Especially since it's my first game against one of the hardest teams in the game. Yeah, I'm totally cool with a tie. The 3v3 tie. And then this happens. I'm like, oh, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl. I hate you so much. Oh. But I did already spoil that this game ends in a tie anyway. So I sort of spoiled that. And there's no suspense anymore. It was very, very close though. As you'll see in this... Approaching turn here. Oh. 
So he gets a knockout there, which I'm like, uh, that's not a huge deal. It would have been nice to have Louie Tail Strong there for an extra tackle zone, but it's not entirely necessary. He gets a blitz. And uh, both down, which is nice, because, you know, turnover stops him from sitting up his team even more. So at this point, I think, okay, this guy right here, you can't see his range, but he's not in, in touchdown range. It's just these three players here that have the potential to actually score. So all I need to do is stop these three players from being able to score either by knocking one of them down with a blitz or just by surrounding them with tackle zones. So basically what I realize is I'm just not going to knock down the War Dancer because they have Blige. It's just not going to happen. So I shouldn't waste my blitz on that War Dancer because they're just not going to get knocked down. That's That's just... You know, that's how it happens. They're not going to get knocked down. So I instead, try and blitz one of the line elves here. Which one did I do? I think I tried going for the, the catcher here. If I remember right, I tried blitzing the catcher. Because it was between the catcher and the line elf, and the catcher has two strengths, which means I get more... more I get two, di two dice blocks against that one. Even still... Even still, and it ends up being a pusher and a tacker down. So I reroll that, and guess what? It ends up being a pusher and a tacker down. Again. So, my blitz was wasted. Unfortunately, I didn't get to knock down that player. Which makes me sad, but, you know. I mean, but you can see, we do have three players around this guy. We have uh, three players around this guy. Three players around the war dancer as well. So, oh, I just remembered something from the beginning of the game. Anyway, and we do get a turnover there, which gets really fucking annoying. Because we roll a one, of course. We try and dodge out. That's Coria. Oh, my, you can see his picture. He's, like, rubbing his head. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he should be sorry. That's Coria. You've done nothing in this game. Uh, oh, you got the injury, didn't you? Never mind. You've done something in this game. Anyway, basically, the only way this guy can score now is if he runs over here if he runs this way beneath Glornor passes it to any of these three players which his best bet would be to this war dancer over here to the left or I guess to the lineman With but the thing about this one is that he has loner which is really good for me because uh, oh no, I guess it doesn't matter because he didn't have any rerolls never mind it doesn't matter but he's only got two minutes to score. If I remember right, he actually waits forever to decide what he's going to do. He waits until, like, it's 40 seconds left, so we're going to have a brief moment of nothing at all happening here. Come on. You can do it. Come on, Tazenfell. You can do it. Come on, Tazenfell. You got this. Just kidding. You don't got this. Because I'm from the future, and I'm telling you, you don't got this. But, I mean, he's got to pass it to one of these players, which any of my players can intercept. Then he's got to actually... Six oh, <laughs> never mind. I forgot that he did that. He did some crazy dodge in there. So he can actually just run down here and pass the ball. And then that's it. And then he can score. Obviously, that didn't work out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why. It was close, though. It was close, though. And that's the end of the game. So we're going to go ahead and skip by that. And does that show us our uh, stats from the game? Yeah, it does. Okay. So match rating 17. We got... See how much money we got? No, it doesn't. Weird. Anyway, we got one fan factor from that. One MVP, two passes, two catches, two touchdowns, all that stuff. Our MVP was, of course, Fats Rats. It was between him and Jelly Roll Morton. I mean, those guys are awesome. So there was that. And that's really the end of the game. And then afterwards, let's go ahead and take a look back at... Um... Wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's take a look back at the team here. Oop, didn't mean to get crashing those boys. That's my own high elf team, which I haven't really played much in a long time. But let's see. Scat rats. So that's why I added the extra skills at the beginning of the video. So let's see. Rotten Jelly Roll Morton. I gave him block. Block's always good. Fats Rats Waller, I gave him Wrestle. Fats Rats is going to be our ball sacker. So we're going to give him Strip Ball next time he levels up. So and he, basically he can really, even if it's a red dice block, he's going to be able to take the ball away from a ball carrier, basically no matter what the situation is. 
So he'll be a very, very useful player. And that'll do it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this match. Let me know what you think of the post-commentary stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.